What is going on, everyone? It is Adam and Craig from Grand Sand Golf joining you here to discuss the Northern Trust Round 1 and look ahead a little bit at Round 2. Craig, what were your uh, first kind of thoughts on the uh, first round there? Uh, I thought I thought it was a great day of, of golf. Um, it was pretty enjoyable. I don't know if you got to watch any of the featured groups in the morning, but it's always enjoyable to follow Tiger around the course. Um, and then... Yeah, good play in the afternoon. I thought it seemed, I don't know if you actually have the numbers, but it seemed like the afternoon wave was a bit lower overall. Yeah, I think they were about 0.2 strokes better overall, so not significant, I think, in any way, but a little bit better. Um, There's also a few of our our sleeper picks, um, or the ones we've been discussing for a while, did pretty well, which... Yeah, you pulled up. You have our uh, buddy, our betting outline there. Um, let's kind of do a quick run through to see how everyone's doing. I mean, if we go down mine, Bryson was the my winner. He got a birdie on 18 to pull the even par. He just he looked poor on on his approach. I mean, he he's getting at 330, 340, 350 in the first cut or on the fairway, but he's then he has a 15 foot birdie putt. I mean, he's not capitalizing on his chances off the tee he's he's even par i mean looking quickly i think the cut line's gonna be three or four under tomorrow um if conditions stay nice i would put my money on four under i think but i think he can get there i'm not too worried about it i think he looked good i mean cameron davis though let's talk about my sleeper what what a stud yeah um, you also brought him up on our Monday show as your your yeah. notable for DFS purposes. Um, he was, I want to say he was 6,100. Was that right? 6,300 for the 6, uh, tournament, yeah. Um, so to have a sleeper come from come from right here all the way up to uh, all the way up to top of the leaderboard after day one, that feels pretty good. I bet. Yeah, I, w- I mean, I was going to be happy if he put together a few birdies and made the cut. Made and the then, cut. <laughs> hey, yeah, but having a T1 after the first, I mean, he, he had a rough par 3 eight there, which him and Fleetwood uh, both kind of limped into the, to the end there. But yeah, I'm thrilled with that. Justin Rose, uh, not really much to say on Justin Rose or Adam Hatter. I think Rose finished two under. He, he looked a little bit better than he has last couple tournaments, but I'm still happy I didn't really put anything on him this week. How do you feel about Rory and your team there? Well, I'm feeling pretty good about my fade. Um, No, uh, Dustin (laughs) definitely, early on especially, he was 4 under, it seemed pretty quick. Or 5 under, I think, at one point even. Yeah, he looked... Well, I think he was playing the harder not playing first, at least for the morning wave. Uh, So we thought he was going to kind of turn the corner there and yeah, it looked like oh, he could have easily like gone lower than he did. Um, yeah. Uh, no, Rory, I don't mind him at at two under. Uh, the he, he looked like it's been this way with Rory. I mean, I always feel like it feels this way with Rory. Um, he because his ball striking is so good, it feels like he misses so many opportunities because he gives himself so many opportunities. He had five right. birdies on the day. Uh, and three bogeys, but he was, you know, he lost almost a stroke putting. So I don't know. I I think yeah. He, I think I did. I see on Twitter that he changed putter. Something's going on there. It's a little bit DJ esque with Rory. Well, so putting I was right actually now. looking at this. If you look at Rory's strokes gained on the past few years, um, no, let me get rid of this. Um, you'll see, so this year, his putting, I mean, it's about neutral, but he has been, he has years where he loses strokes, and then those are his worst years, right. and then any time he actually, he actually gains strokes, he's usually just like a world beater. Right. Um, so, I don't know, hopefully he can, he can turn it on. The thing I do like about him staying at two, I have him in about 50% of my DraftKings, and, okay. um, so 69 means that he keeps the uh, all rounds under 70 alive, which, you know, if you do whether 
you know, he ends up winning or as a part of lineups. If you can get right. all of them under 60, it's always better than if, you know, he goes 72, 66. 61. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, who else? Yeah. Uh, Cam Champ, he disappointed. Um, I don't know if he ever got it back down to, no, he, he was still at what, plus one. Um, so yeah, that's a sleeper, I guess, but. You could come back in round two. Yeah, I don't have huge exposure to him in in, in my lineup, so I, I don't worry about that one a whole lot. Uh, Connors also, he was under par most of the day, and then he ended up he, plus one. He also had a, yeah, he had a struggle down the stretch, because he, I was looking at our top 10 in our value model for 2020 on DraftKings and Instagram there, and almost everyone was under par of our top values in 2020. Uh, but yeah, Connors kind of slip at the end there well so he was and he was on the front to finish and he ended up three over on the front which it was playing the lower of the two sides i'm pretty sure right which so um don't love that i also i have some exposure to him in fantasy so if he ends up being my my weak point in a couple of them that might not be the best do you think kevin isn't here right now because he's so embarrassed by his picks. I mean, Leishman is a sleeper and Spieth is a fade. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he almost would have. He would have been better probably keeping Kepka in. <laughs> he's probably gonna. He's probably gonna send me a text tomorrow and be like, "Oh man, I mixed up my sleeper and my fade there. You got to switch them around." Yeah. No. What did Spieth end up at? Uh, two. Only minus two, I think. But he. he was I mean, he went eagle birdie, birdie, birdie. I think from nine, ten, eleven, or. Whatever's uh Well he opened with a double. Yeah. And he, he was three over at one point and then went on that tear. Um, I love it. Yeah. I mean we were talking on Monday about I had made my one lineup for the week that was kind of my stars and studs or uh, stars and scrubs and I had Cameron Davis, I had Bryson and then I was making a balanced lineup uh after we did our show and Speeth I, I was kinda I don't know, I think Speeth might be my last one in, but he made the lineup. So I was happy to see that and I I don't know. I'm rooting for the guy. I hope he makes a weekend and makes a little bit of noise. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, do you want to look forward to Friday in the showdown contest uh, for tomorrow? Yeah, let's jump into it. We we uh, we aren't aren't going to go through our full lineups, but uh, we will give a bit of a a. Oh, the one thing I was going to say is our three three top Canadians here. I think. I think Nick Taylor did end up, yeah, he did end up coming back to three under, but for a while there, it looked like the comedian that none of us picked was going to be the only comedian <laughs> on the day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's look at uh, showdown. Do you want to, do you want to give us three, your three picks first? Yeah. So Craig and I will be doing our live stream tomorrow afternoon. So we thought let's put in a couple or let's put in a showdown contest and we can have a couple guys that we are, specifically rooting for a little bit harder than maybe our tournament lineups or uh, above and beyond our cut sweats. So I'll go through my three, a little bit of reasoning, but they are Xander Shoffley, Terrell Hatton, and Doc Redman, which might surprise a few people. But let's start with uh, the X-Men. Let's start with Xander. So what do you have pulled up there? The model? I mean, all the three of the guys were high on the alive. model. Let's look at the live strokes game from today. So basically, with Xander, so, he was. By, what do you want? Uh, just just, want just go down to Xander. Yeah, he was three under, kind of a pedestrian three under, I would call it. He was one of the highest in our models. I think just our absolute um, predictive to win. Um, but he lost strokes putting and around the green on on Thursday. I just think I think he's going to move up on Friday. I like that he's. Strong on approach, strong off the tee, and I think he'll just clean up a couple of things to post a better day in three under. I think he could get to four, five, six pretty easily. Um, I don't think he had e- any eagles today, and there were eagles uh, out there to be had. So Xander's my first. Yeah, he did look like um, I did get to watch him a bit in the afternoon. I didn't get to watch all the way through, but uh, it looked like he was leaving strokes on the board, uh, which, yeah. I mean, for it's nice to see that someone's hitting it well for picking him in a showdown because he had short putts that he missed that if those fall that's that round gets better and better 
Yeah, exactly. I think he's just going to kind of continue to move up. I mean, tomorrow and through the weekend. Next up, I think he finished. Uh, you're going to have to find Hatton for me. Uh, Terrell Hatton. So Xander was 9,500 on DraftKings. Hatton is coming in at 7,900. Hatton, I feel like, played really well. I think he started birdie, birdie, birdie. Kind of to the end of his round, but he lost quite. I mean, I think he almost lost his stroke putting. Was it 0. 0.71 that he lost? 0. 0.73. 0.73. So. 20th on the year overall. Like he's the best. He's the 20th best putter on the year, and he lost those strokes putting on the greens on Thursday. He still was exceptional on approach, which he always is, and he was strong off the tee. So another guy. I'm just looking. You know, putting can change. It's, it's pretty variable day to day. I think he's just another guy that can greatly improve on his uh, Thursday score, even though he he is decent and he had a good score. He's also top in our model and our value model for uh, the whole tournament. So, you know, kind of his long, long-term long game measures up well here. Yeah, I, I hope you're right on that one because I have him on a, I, I want to say I have about 20% ownership on okay. my, on my uh, weekly tickets. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a good Friday out of, out of uh, Hatton. So you're going to have to scroll down a fair bit to get to uh, my third pick here. Doc Redman, 7,200. I think he finished at two over. So he did not have he did not have any kind of day at all. And after his Wyndham Championship, I kind of, I mean, we talked about him on the podcast a little bit. He's a young, talented guy. And he just kind of fell off, especially you can see on the greens again, just one of the worst days, I think, out there of the whole entire field. Like I said, I think the Kalan's going to get to three or four under. He's plus two right now. He actually, there's a chance that he could still make the next tournament, the top 70, if he misses the cut. But if he makes the cut, he almost secures his spot for uh, the top 70. So I think he's going to fire away tomorrow. He's going to need a round of about five, six under. And I think at that price, I think he can do it. Yeah, well, if, I mean, if you look at those numbers on the week and you compare them to what his numbers have been in recent tournaments, um, he's a better ball striker than that. So he, know, he on, just the, had a... on the year or in, in his last tournaments, um, yeah, I, I, I think you can, you can expect, a, you know, an improvement to the mean. Um, yeah, that's what we're always kind of looking at with the live stroke gains is you can have bad rounds, you can have good rounds, but for the most part, you're going to kind of have that bell curve where you're going to be closer to the your yearly average or your career average. And when you have a round that, that is that poor on the greens or that poor on approach or off the tee, that is just not what you've been seeing all year, you, you kind of have to think that they're going to show some improvement for the next round. Yeah, so and to, I think the other thing is it's not so bad you know like his ball striking like when you see that he lost three putting um if he's you know if these are blowing up all red i think it gets harder to take a guy but when it's you know like he's never actually like his his off the tee is not usually it's it's more approach for him and while it wasn't as good as he can be it's not like he blew up there so um you have no reason to think that he he's he can't, he doesn't have the feel, you know. He just right. you just think more that they weren't they weren't dropping. He wasn't getting up and down, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, to recap, Xander Shoffley ninety five hundred, Terrell Hatton seventy nine hundred, and Doc Redman at seventy two hundred are my three showdown picks for, for tomorrow. Craig, what do you got? Okay, so I'm gonna go with someone who flies under everyone's radar to start, uh, and that's John Rom. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> No, he doesn't fly under radars, but uh, he is, um, I forget, yeah, so he's 9,600 here, Um, Yeah. and I think, I mean, he, he, his round today, he saved a lot around the greens. Uh, He had, I don't know if you saw near the end of the broadcast, but he had a beautiful flop shot just on the second to last or last hole. No, I didn't see it. Um, but I mean, I did see the one out of 
the bunker when you drove it into the bunker i forget what hole that is on the front okay. um okay that drivable par four he hit it in the bunker and then he almost hold that out for eagle um but i mean he yeah he's they always talk about about the hands did you do you hear them call him big spain today no i didn't hear that oh, i like i like I that one that. Um, but again, like, yeah, this is a little bit concerning here, the yeah. approach of, of minus two and a half, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't think that John Rahm is all of a sudden having a crisis of confidence hitting the ball. No, he, there's no, yeah. You know, his tee to green, like he, he salvaged it with his around the green as we were talking about, but then also putting, like he is not, he's usually a slight plus putting, um, that holds up recently for the most part. Right. Um, so when we look at him on here, I think that this two under round here is pretty close to like what the floor of what to expect from sure. him. Yeah, but yeah. I think his ceiling is that he could go out and shoot a 63, 62. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I'm going to be happy to have heavy ownership on him. Yeah. Um, and what did I say? He was 9,600. So yeah, it's oh, a risky the pick thing. with the uh, world number one, but you know, yeah, is he, I is like he it. He... Number one, or I know they've been trading it back and forth a bit. I um, think he's last back thing. To world one. Last thing, just real quick on him, um, and then I'll jump right into my my other guy here. So here, just what I did real quick. I, I'm I'm working on making a a a bit of a, a similar model to this kind of thing, but with some of the, the showdown stats. Right, right, right. And so what this is, if you look here, uh, this is um, 2020 early round scoring averages, and then mm -hmm. 2020 late round scoring averages. So you look at Rom, and he's scoring two and a quarter strokes better when he goes out early versus late. Right. Uh, and, y you know, like there's not, I want to say there's not a ton of, of rounds on there i'd have to look up exactly what that is right but with him when you look back so even you know 2019 he was still doing better early than late and yeah. 2018 it was a stroke so like these ones where you see the same consistent thing they either you know they like going out early with those soft greens or they just something about their their pre-game routine or something like that where right might as well try to see if there's a pattern um and that sort of segs segues uh, well, I should say new. as well, I think for tomorrow, it's going to be pretty much the same as today, but there might be increased wins in the afternoon. So if you are building a complete showdown lineup, um, I mean, we're just giving you three of our picks right now, but maybe there might be a little bit of uh, preference for the morning wave tomorrow. Well, and I mean, even if you like, you know, if you're building a couple, you throw one in with you know say you like someone in the afternoon or or, yeah, or well, wherever yeah. you throw one of your lineups in where it's all morning and then if it yeah, does yeah. if the weather does blow up then you do have that like hey you know this whole this whole flight is going to do better than that whole flight it's it's similar Even to stacking a... in in football where you're going to have a you know if you got the quarterback and the receiver you, you or even if it's like your a kicker areas. on AstroTurf versus natural gra grass or something like that. Yeah. They just have an advantage with their playing conditions. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, this segs into my, my next, my next uh, pick here, which is yeah. Adam Scott. And he is at, I want to say, 83. Yeah, he's at 83. But he's another guy who, you know, on this year... He's two strokes. He's two strokes better early flight to late flight, um, right. and that, like, that's too big to be to be actually expecting that he's going to be two strokes better. But um, just the fact that it does hold up in in years, you know, three years in a row, he's better early. Um, might as well. Is that just like his uh, Aussie time is like? Yeah, a little bit better. <laughs> Maybe he like he gets to go to bed earlier. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if we look up, so Scott was uh, what was he on the day? He was five, or did he get to six? No, he he was still I think at five. I, I think I see him right there. Yeah. Um, so he also, uh, you know, he was good. Good approach. If you look at him, uh, like his his value stats here, uh, and again, these prices are not for the showdown. These ones here right. were were going right. into the week. Um, but if you look at his his typical 
like typically he's strong in approach and he is a positive putter. Uh, All right. Yeah, he is a positive putter for the most part, I think. Um, but his his round this week, like this is good. I like that. I, I think that it reflects that, you know, he does only have a single tournament in which he was negative in approach. So if right. we expect that it's going to return to something positive there and we see that on the first day, that gives me, you know, a decent, a decent hunch that it's more likely that he's going to be positive on approach tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think he's good value there. Uh, I, I, I was high on him going into the week. I'm pretty happy with how that's standing right now. Uh, For sure. Yeah. I have pretty good exposure actually to both Rom and Scott in my week long. So I'll be, yeah. I'll be sort of almost doubling down a bit on their Friday doubling scores. Down. Yeah. 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 Um, and then my last one is a bit more of a value play. And that is Denny McCarthy, who, if you look right, right. here, he he was not someone that I had uh, going into the tournament on any of my week longs, uh, but he right. was minus two on the day. He was, yeah. you know, almost all of that. Well, yeah, no, all of that was gained uh, on off the tee and on approach, uh, which this number here is why I. I'm picking Denny McCarthy because I, so he was, he lost two strokes. So he should have been four under if he was a neutral putter today uh, based yep. on his ball striking. But Denny McCarthy is not a neutral putter. Uh, if you look here, you'll see that he is actually the uh, top putter on the year. Like uh, yeah. typically his ball striking is his weakness and his putting is a huge, huge strong suit. This this over a, a, a stroke gained around putting, um, that's that's leading uh, leading the tour right now. But then the other thing, he does have some consistently positive approach play. So it it what I'm hoping in picking him is whether it's trending or not. He's hitting the ball well right now. Um, right. I lost him here. So so I'm I'm hoping that this that there's a good chance that this holds up. And right. then if he can turn that around to his usual putting, which we know day-to-day -day putting is, is or super slightly volatile, positive. Or yeah. slightly positive, uh, that there's a really good chance he's going to he's gonna go low. Um, and then he also, the guy makes eagles like it's his job to do so. Man, which... he, he can go, he's one of those, he's a great showdown player, just kind of keep in the back of your mind at all times because he is, can go so low sometimes. I mean, he just, he has... Tons of amateur wins, I think, and you won the web.com tour championship in 2018. I mean, he's just he's kind of just like a baller, like, he can go out there and just lap the field. It seems like also interesting with uh, McCarthy and Redmond, I think they both started in the 60s, uh, the tournament, and they've fallen back. So they both in the, need in to the do, FedEx Cup in the FedEx Cup standing. So they both need to do a little bit of work. Uh, I mean, McCarthy's in a much better position, but. If, if he, he can get the to the weekend, then, yeah, yeah. So what's um, the yeah? So McCarthy right now he'd be falling to seventy six with his with his finish. So that would be enough to to take him out of going exactly. forward next week. Um, so recap, yeah. who do you got? To recap, I've got Rom Scott and Denny McCarthy as my picks. All right, and we'll put in some uh, showdown lineups and see how they fare against each other tomorrow uh, when we're watching the broadcast. Yeah, um, so we'll be doing we'll be doing a live stream, uh, cut sweat, uh, just you know following both our, our daily um, our daily showdown lineups and then our week long. I, I don't know how many you've got in, but I've got I've got twenty lineups in a in a contest. So <laughs> I've got a lot of players that I'll be keeping my eye on, and other ones I'll be cheering against. And then I don't know, we may be doing a little bit of of live hole to hole result bettings too. So. I did a little bit today just kind of as a teaser to see what it was like. And I I actually got Fleetwood and Davis on bogeys on eight because eight was trending as a harder par three. That was that par three, yeah. Yeah, and I was hammering 18 uh, birdie or better under par. And the odds were getting so much greater. It was unbelievable. Like they're going minus 225 or minus 250 to go under par on 18. So, 
yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll be doing a little bit of that. We'll have our showdown contest and we'll be watching the cut sweats. I'll probably we'll tweet it out before we start, but I'm guessing sometime midway through the uh, the afternoon wave there. We'll yeah. come on Twitch. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Cool. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow and we look forward to seeing you guys in there. Yeah. See you guys.